Everybody's been asking me about my latest obsession and no, I'm not talking about egg and brisket tacos from America's finest dining and petroleum establishment. I am talking about KVMs. What does KVM stand for? Keyboard, video, and mouse. Simply put, a KVM can extend USB and HDMI connections on a computer over a long distance. That means your computer workstation does not need to be located where your actual computer is. And this is not simply screen sharing over a network to remote control a computer. It's a hardwired connection with reliability and no latency. So why have you been seeing KVMs all over the place in church front YouTube videos? The first reason is because it really cleans up your tech booth. I don't know about you guys, I cannot stand a cluttered production booth or tech booth. Here's an example of a tech booth workstation without a KVM. The computer is located at the tech booth, so all of the cabling, the inputs and outputs, the I.O. associated with this computer are all cluttered in a mess behind the monitor. And you guys know entropy always rules the day when it comes to our church worship production setups. Things always, always, always get messier. So using a KVM is a great way to eliminate the majority of cabling that you need at a workstation for someone to control the apps and software they need to run production for worship. Because what we're gonna do with a KVM is we're gonna move that computer and all of the IO connectivity from the tech booth where it's a cluttered mess into a nice, clean and organized equipment rack. This dramatically simplifies the integration of your computers with your audio and video and network system at your church because everything's located in one centralized place. Let's say you have a pro presenter machine that needs four video outputs to get to your video switcher. Well, if your pro presenter computer and your deck link expansion module lives in the tech booth, that means you have to run four additional video cables to get back to your equipment rack where most likely that's where your video switcher is located. But if your your pro presenter machine is actually in that equipment rack right next to the video switcher. You just have to run four short SDI cables. The same goes for networking. Let's say that same computer needs to send audio over a Dante network. So you want your own network interface on that computer for Dante. And then you want another wired network interface on that computer for the control network for production. Those are two more cables that have to be run to a computer if it's at the workstation in your front of house. Let me show you a quick example of what this looks like in one of our recent installs. So here you have a church. This is Radiant Church, pretty small sanctuary, relatively simple setup. And we've got our front of house area back here. You've got the stage over here. We have one equipment rack for audio connections right here. And then back here, we have an equipment rack where we have the majority of the computer and the video infrastructure. So at front of house, they've got a mixing console, the SQ5, and they've got Workstation 1 for audio and broadcast control, and they've got Workstation 2, which is their pro presenter machine. So Workstation 1 only needed one network connection for KVM control. Workstation 2 also only needed one network connection there. And then our audio console has a connection to S-Link for stage boxes, as well as a dedicated network connection back to the main network switch for Dante. And then we also have a little network switch at front of house as well if we want to plug in any other network device. So using KVMs really can keep your workstation areas or your tech booth very lean, clean, and organized. And if you ever wanna change positions of where is my pro presenter operator gonna be, where is my video switching operator gonna be, you can easily just reroute your KVM instead of having to move a whole computer setup from one spot to another. Before we dive into the specific KVM that we're using at all of our installs, I want to distinguish between a KVM extender and a KVM switch. A KVM extender is what we've been using. It's a simple point-to-point -point solution where you have a transmitter at the computer end and you have a receiver at the workstation end and you're simply transmitting the USB and HDMI video data from the computer to the receiver workstation over one unshielded CAT6 cable. It's a very foolproof and simple infrastructure and it's very affordable. Another method of setting up a KVM system is using a KVM switch. That's when you have multiple transmitters, maybe for multiple computers, and you have multiple receivers for multiple workstations. Those transmitters and receivers are then all connected into one switch, like a network switch, and then you can have more flexibility in how you route the transmitters to receivers. That is some cool flexibility, but it's gonna come with more cost. 
in most small to mid-sized church environments, we're not really using the KVM functionality to be able to easily remote into different machines uh, all the time. Most of your workstations can be dedicated to one machine at a time. But if you're running a data center somewhere with dozens or hundreds of computers that you wanna quickly access from the same workstation, you probably wanna look into a more robust KVM switch and networking setup. But the device we use, which I'm gonna show you now, is simply an extender. So here it is, it is the AV Access HDEX60-DM. That's what I have right here in this box. You'll find links to the KVM and the other recommended items we have in the Church Front Toolkit. So click the link below, download that free toolkit today. So when you open the box, you're gonna get two main components. You've got the transmitter end. This goes on the computer end, usually in your equipment rack where the computer is. And then you have the receiver end. This is gonna go at your tech booth. You'll see on the KVM itself, it says UTP in and UTP out. That means unshielded twisted pair cable. So make sure you use unshielded cable with your KVMs. We learned this the hard way. We did not notice that little UTP label right there. We tried using shielded cable and it glitched like crazy. At first we thought the KVM unit was not working right um, because it would kind of work, um, but make sure you use unshielded cable on all KVM setups, specifically with these AV access KVMs. Maybe it's different for other KVM devices out there. They're nice and compact. You can fit them just about anywhere you want. They do come with some mounting hardware if you wanna mount them on top or below a desk so you can't even see them. It's also gonna come with a power supply. The power supply gets plugged into the receiver end at the tech booth, and then it can provide power to the transmitter end over your ethernet cable. These KVM extenders are $200, and we've installed probably a few dozen of these so far over almost the past year. None of them have failed yet. In most of our installs, because they're relatively affordable devices, we actually spec a spare. Just in case something happens, a client can easily swap those out quickly. But when you compare these to the price of some of the higher end KVMs like Vertive or Adder, if you're looking for some more premium options, uh, look into those options. Um, those are gonna cost you thousands of dollars usually, even just for a few workstations. So I'm very happy with these AV access extenders so far. I was sure to order a bunch of them before I sat down to film this video because I know you guys will probably go order a ton of these. And then they're not gonna be in stock for our projects that we have coming up. All right, so check out the connectivity on the device. So this is a transmitter. This is on the computer side. You're gonna plug in the USB host port into your computer. That's how it gets the data for keyboard, uh, your mice, as well as if you're using like a stream deck, which we use in a lot of cases. Then you have two HDMI ports. So in a lot of Mac setups, we use one dedicated HDMI out from the computer to go into one of these, and then we'll use a USB-C to HDMI adapter to get our second display into, into this setup. And that's what I also like about this KVM in particular is that it's a dual display option, which really comes in handy for your tech booth workstations. Now let's look down on the receiver side. You've got, again, your CAT6 connection, which you also had on your transmitter side. And it's gonna give you a nice status light to let you know it's connected and it's on. It's just gonna turn green when it's working the way it should. And then down here on the receiver end, we've got the two HDMI outputs for dual monitor setup. You can also just have one monitor if you want. You don't have to use both. And then we have four USB ports. I recommend using the half amp ports for your keyboard and mouse. They don't really need to consume really any power at all. And then the one amp ports, save those for larger USB devices. Like if you're gonna use a stream deck, theoretically you could plug maybe a little audio interface into this if you needed to get audio to and from that workstation as well. I haven't tested that a lot because we usually use Dante audio over networking, but that is a interesting application for a device like this KVM. While we're talking about this setup at the workstation, I highly recommend getting a wired keyboard and mouse. I like the ones by Macaulay. They have some cheap ones, they have some more premium ones. Make sure you get a wired keyboard and mouse for your tech booth because you don't wanna be messing with mice and keyboards that start dying on you and you have to recharge them in the middle of a service. And please, please, please do not use a magic mouse by Apple in your tech booth. 
We also have been liking the lay flat monitor stand here. This one's by Weirson. You can find it on Amazon. It's kind of cool because you can really have that cool um, almost control room feel with your tech booth. And it's also convenient. So like when I'm operating uh, for computers for worship, the monitor's not getting in the way of my view of what's going on in the room. So you don't have to use this for all of them. You could also use those more flexible vase mount monitor arms that you'll find on Amazon as well if you want more flexibility in where you put that monitor. Lastly, for our monitors, we're usually specking 24 inch monitors and they're just 1080p monitors by LG. I think it's a little overkill to need 1080p monitors at your workstations. If you want to get 4K monitors, you're going to have to get 4K KVM. These ones are limited to 1080p. Distance, these KVMs are rated for up to 60 meters. For those of you who use real measuring units, that's about just shy of 200 feet, which is great for most small to mid-sized churches. That means we have 200 feet to be able to run our unshielded twisted pair Cat6 cable from the equipment rack to the tech booth. If you have to go farther than that, make sure you look into some of the more premium options by AV Access or again, other brands like Vertiv or Adder. I've heard lots of good things about those brands. I've not tried them a lot myself. We've had only one issue with a KVM across all of our installs and the KVM worked fine in terms of the monitor, the keyboard and mouse. It was the stream deck, but specifically this setup, the only variable was that it was a Mac studio that was rack mounted in the equipment rack. And for some reason, the stream deck would not be responsive like it usually is when we're using Mac minis in a KVM, works fine using the stream deck plugged into the USB ports on the KVM. But in this one case, the Mac studio uh, was not compatible with the setup with the KVM and the stream deck we had in the tech booth. Other than that, this setup has worked flawlessly. I think it's a great value for these products. This KVM is a relatively simple solution and maybe you're like, oh man, I wanna start implementing these at my church like tomorrow. I would wait and I would think about the bigger picture of the design of your church's AVL system. For the most part, this is really only a game changer if you have a setup like what we've been specking for a lot of our integration projects where the majority or all of your equipment is located in equipment racks. Sometimes those two racks are in the same spot backstage. Maybe sometimes there's an audio rack backstage and a video rack in a media room somewhere closer to front of house. Before you go buying these things for your ministry and your setup, just think through, is this practically actually gonna make my life that much better? If you reach out to our team, if you wanna work with us on your next integration project, there's a big chance you're gonna see one of these implemented in your system. And it's gonna allow you to have a super clean and lean front of house workstation. Head on over to churchfront.com if you would like to work with our team to work on your next AVL project. We've also got courses over there. We also do consulting. Whatever it is, go to churchfront.com, reach out today, and we look forward to talking with you soon. Thanks for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and I'll see you next time.